Welcome to the Why It Works tutorial. We've all heard of market bubbles, and many of us know someone who's been caught in one. But although there are plenty of lessons to be learned from past bubbles, investors still get drawn in each time a new one comes around. A bubble is only one part of an important phase in markets. So if you want to avoid being caught again, it's essential to know what the four different phases of the investment cycles are and how to apply this knowledge. All investments, markets, and economies go through the exact same four phases repeatedly. They go up, peak, go down, and then bottom. When one cycle is finished, the next begins. In this short tutorial, you are going to learn the four phases in an investment's economic cycle, how to recognize each phase, and how to take advantage of the cycle, and ultimately why Market Cycle 360 works. Let's begin. The first phase is the accumulation phase and occurs after the investment has bottomed. In this phase, corporate insiders, smart money managers, and experienced traders begin to buy, figuring that the worst is over. Investment valuations are very attractive, even though general market sentiment is still bleak. Usually, articles in the media preach doom and gloom, and those who were long through the worst of the investment's decline have recently capitulated that is, given up and sold the rest of their holdings in disgust. But in the accumulation phase, prices have flattened, and for every seller throwing in the towel, someone is there to pick it up at a healthy discount. And the final part of the accumulation phase is that overall market sentiment begins to switch from negative to neutral. The second phase is called markup. During the markup phase, the investment has been stable for a while and is beginning to slowly move higher. The early majority are getting on the bandwagon. This group includes technicians who, seeing that the market is putting in higher lows and higher highs, recognize that market direction and sentiment have changed. Media stories begin to discuss the possibility that the worst is over, and as this phase matures, more investors jump on the bandwagon as fear of being in the investment is supplanted by greed and not wanting to be left out. As this phase begins to come to an end, the late majority jump in and market volumes begin to increase substantially. The investment's valuations climb well beyond historic norms and logic and reason take a back seat to greed. While the late majority is getting in, the smart money and insiders are unloading. But as prices begin to level off, or as the rise slows down, those laggards who have been sitting on the sidelines see this as a buying opportunity and jump in en masse. Prices make one last parabolic move, known in the marketplace as a selling climax or blow-off top, when the largest gains in the shortest periods often occur. But the investment's economic cycle is nearing the top of the bubble. Finally, Investors' sentiment moves from neutral to bullish to downright euphoric during this phase. The third of the cycle phases is the distribution phase of the cycle and when sellers begin to dominate. This part of the cycle is identified by a period in which the bullish sentiment of the previous phase turns into a mixed sentiment. Prices can often stay locked in a trading range that can last a few weeks or even months. When this phase is over, the market reverses direction. The distribution phase is a very emotional time for the markets, as investors are gripped by periods of complete fear, interspersed with hope and even greed, as the market may at times appear to be taking off again. The investment's valuation is extreme, and many issues sentiment slowly but surely begins to change. But this transition can happen quickly if accelerated by a strongly negative geopolitical event or extremely bad economic news. Those who are unable to sell for a profit settle for a break-even or a small loss. Markdown is the fourth and final phase in the cycle and is the most painful for those who still hold positions. Many investors hang on because their investment has fallen below what they paid for it, behaving like the pirate who falls overboard clutching a bar of gold, refusing to let go in the vain hope of being rescued. It's only when the market has plunged 50% or more that the laggards, many of whom bought during the distribution or early markdown phase, give up or capitulate. This constitutes most investors, at least the broad public. Most investors at this point are at a loss, 
confused, fear for their financial future, and are emotionally spent. They usually have more questions than answers. Most importantly, what they do not realize is that the majority of the decline could have been avoided had they understood the four phases. Although not always obvious, cycles exist in all economies. Let's take a look at three charts representing different cyclical markets. The first chart ranks, top to bottom, international investment performance. Now the second chart ranks, top to bottom, the performance of different capitalization types. And this final chart illustrates which sectors had the best performance each year. Here we have shrunk and combined all three charts. The bold black line in each chart represents the performance of the S&P 500. The colors above the line outperform the S&P 500, and those below the line underperform. The colors clearly illustrate that buying and holding one color does not work in the long run. And this fact is true no matter what your diversification is, if you only use buy and hold. Doesn't it make more sense to try and remain in the top colors each year? We're now going to analyze subsequent year performances of the top 10 mutual funds going back to 1999. In the 2005 chart, you will notice that in 2006, just one year later, the top 10 money managers of 2005 were already beginning to lose their star status. Looking at the 2004 chart, you can see that virtually every fund was different than the 2005 performers, and by 2006, none were in the top 10. As for the 2003 top 10 performers, as you see, by 2006, their economic momentum had run out and their performances now rank in the thousands. To get directly to the point, we're going to skip back now to the top 10 performers in 1999. Virtually all funds have consistently ranked in the thousands. The most important point of this research is that you or your professional advisor must actively monitor each of your investment's four phases or your efforts will prove mediocre at best. Why is this? Because it doesn't matter what mutual fund, stock, or exchange-traded fund you own. The true efficiency is buying a specific investment when the economic momentum is right for that vehicle, then to hold that vehicle until cyclical momentum ends. Let's translate this into the four phases we just learned. Buy a specific investment in the later part of Phase 1 or in the early part of Phase 2, and then sell that investment in Phase 3 and move on to the next investment. Now that you've learned the secrets of the four phases, you can apply them yourself. Remember, investment decisions are often ruled by emotions, especially in volatile markets. These emotions can cause delay or inaction that can result in devastating but avoidable losses. So if you do not totally trust yourself to manage this, let Market Cycle 360 do it for you automatically. Market Cycle 360 works because it algorithmically determines where a particular investment is in its economic cycle. Market Cycle 360 has a built-in automated bear market defense feature that can protect your wealth when all markets are declining. Most importantly, it offers trade signals that can put you in the right investment at the right time. Are you in the right investment? You can be. Download Market Cycle 360 and get started today.